Hey there, it's Izzy here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an animated map that you can use in your video projects if you want to show paths of travel. Maybe you're, you want to show traveling from one city to another one or one country to another one. Can you make this in Motion 5? It's a very common question that I get. And so based on popular request, I guess I should say, I'm making this video that shows you how easy it is to do it in Motion 5. And the great thing about doing this type of thing is that when you make the whole thing from beginning to end inside motion, you have total customizing capabilities. You can make it exactly the way that you want it. And I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration. It's not going to be the most uh, detailed, polished thing in the whole world. You could, of course, spend as much time or as little time on this as you want. Okay, let's jump into this. We're going to begin, as always, in the project browser. I'm going to choose a motion project. From the presets, I'm going to begin with Broadcast HD 720, and I'm going to change the frame rate to 29.97. I'll leave the duration at 10 seconds. That's fine. I probably wouldn't actually do that in a real project. I might have a specific time. Like I might know I need five seconds of a little clip showing the travel. In this case, 10 seconds because it's just a demonstration is fine. I'll click open. From here, I'm going to do what I always do. If you've seen my other motion videos, then you know that I always begin by changing the canvas to fit. This is the canvas zoom level so I can see my entire canvas in my window here. I'm also going to save my project. I'll choose file and save as. I'm just going to save over a project that I already have here, Map01, and I'll replace it. Now, from here, the first thing I need to do is bring a map into my project. Now, where can you get a map? Of course, you could make one yourself. You could spend the time actually drawing it. You could draw it inside motion if you wanted to. You could draw it outside of motion and then bring it into motion as a JPEG or as a TIFF file or something like that. But what I did is I just went on Pond5.com. I don't have an affiliation with Pond5 other than the fact that I'm a happy customer. But it's a good place to get stock footage, stock images, and that kind of thing at a pretty low price. And of course, you pay for it once, and then you don't have to pay royalties later as long as you abide by the terms of the licensing agreement. And so I picked this up for 4 bucks. This is a $4 image that I bought. And I really like this one. It's just showing the United States. And it has nice separations there, borders between the different states. That's pretty cool. You can get them a, a world map. You could get maps of specific states or other countries. They have all kinds of stuff there. And I think for $4, it sure saved me a lot of trouble of having to draw the thing myself. I don't have to worry about that now. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to bring this map into my project by just choosing Import. I'm going to rename the group. And I'm going to call this map. I'm also going to scale this up. And there's different ways to scale. I like to use the inspector just to make things easy for me. Go to the inspector and then properties and then the scale slider. This is something I'm a fan of. I don't need to have the whole map because I'm just showing from one city to another one here. And also I'll just drag this over. Okay. So maybe something like... This would be fine for this for now. Now, map is only the first part of the project. I'm also going to have other parts, so I need to add those. I'm going to create a new group for each one of them. I'll hit the plus sign here, and I'll type, I'm going to rename this one to cities. And then I'm going to hit the plus sign again, and I'll rename this one to route or route, however you want to pronounce it. Now, to add the cities, they're basically just going to be dots and text. So to add the dots, I'm just going to click and uh, hold this down, change it to a circle tool that makes it very easy for me to draw a circle. And then I can just click and drag, and I'll just drag it here. This is not going to be precise, but I'm just going to say that this is Phoenix here. And I could make it a big circle. I just want it to be a small one for now. So I'll just go like this. And I want to move it around, so I'll choose the transform tool, move it over here. And by the way, see how it's snapping? It's trying to snap to certain locations. That's the dynamic guides there. Usually they're very helpful, but sometimes they get in the way. So one thing you can do is you can hold down the command key while you're dragging something around, and that temporarily disables. See, I'm holding down command, and now those dynamic guides aren't actually appearing, which I like. Okay, so I'm going to leave that right there, and then I'm going to duplicate this. We'll call this one Phoenix. Here, let's do that. I'm going to rename it Phoenix, and I'll duplicate it, Command-D on the keyboard. And I'm going to call this one Kansas City. And I'll select it and just click and drag it to move it over to approximately where Kansas City is, which is right there. Now, it happens that Kansas City is right on a border. And you'll notice if I hit Command forward slash here on the keyboard to get rid of all these guides, you can barely see that dot. And that's because it's white on white. It doesn't really show up very well. So what I'm going to do, Command forward slash again is I'm going to add a filter to my map. Now, before I do this, I just want to point out that you'll notice that I intentionally chose a map that's made out of black and white. This is great. When you're going to do colorizing in motion, try to find images that are black and white, because then you can just change black to one color and white to one color, and it's very easy to do. So we're going to add a filter. I'm going to go here to the filters and go down to color correction. I'm going to choose colorize. And you'll see that now it's automatically applied some defaults there. I'm going to change black. It says remap black to what color? 
well, I'm gonna change black to another color. Let's choose uh, something similar to black, maybe that dark blue there. And then I'll close this down. And actually, I'm gonna remap white too, because you'll see that the white dot, it does show up, but it's not perfect. Let's see, let's try some other colors. So I'm gonna click remap white. I'll just click right there on the color wheel. And I have this, uh, that's the same color. So obviously that makes everything disappear. That's a close color, so that's not great. Let's try this one. That looks a lot better. This color palette, these colors match with each other. This is something I've made previously. And of course you can see I have a whole bunch of different color palettes stored here from other projects. All right, I'm gonna close this down. And now I can see my cities very nicely. Okay, so now let's add some text. So I'm gonna select cities here in my layers list, the group. I'll click on the text tool. I'll just click where I wanna add this city and I'll type Phoenix and I'll hit escape on the keyboard. And then I'll grab the text tool here and I'm gonna type Kansas City like that and hit escape on the keyboard. And if I wanna move it around a little bit, I can just click and drag it to move it. And once again, the dynamic guides are getting in the way. So I'm gonna hit, hold down the command key and I'll just pop it right there. And then I'll grab Phoenix and do the same thing. And I'll just move it right there. Okay, so now my cities are in place. Let's talk about the route. Okay, so I'm gonna select my route. And now the way that you can draw a route very easily in motion is just using the Bezier drawing tool. That's this little guy right here. I'm just gonna click on it once. Now, if I wanted to, I could say, okay, I'm gonna start with Phoenix. So I just click once there, it creates a little dot, that's the beginning. And if I want to, I could go, okay, and then I'm gonna to go to Kansas City. Now, for this demonstration, these are the only two that I'm using, okay? But if I wanted to, I could also say, okay, well, then after that, I went to Illinois, and then after that, I went to Nevada. So you can have as many of these destinations as you want. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo those last two, and then I'm gonna hit Return on the keyboard, and Return on the keyboard then creates the shape for me. Now, it's a big line here. I don't really want it to be this big, and I don't want it to be this color. So with Bezier selected, you go over to the Shape Inspector, and under Style, I'm gonna turn off Fill, doesn't really make a difference here because I'm just dealing with an outline, but I don't like to have things turned on that shouldn't be. So I turned off fill and I'm gonna change the width of my outline here, which is what you're seeing here. I'm gonna change the width to reduce it. Now I could make it bigger. I'm gonna make it smaller in this case. So maybe something like that roughly, 27 points. And I'm gonna change the color. So I'll click on the color wheel and let's just change it to maybe this color. Yeah, that looks pretty good and it matches. Another thing you'll notice is that if I zoom in here really close, I'll go to fit and then let's choose 50% here. You could probably see it there. You can see command forward slash on the keyboard that my route, my line, my travel path is above the dots. And that's because my route is literally in the layers list above the cities. You can see that here, route is above cities. So I wanna move route to be beneath cities. Now there's a keyboard shortcut I use all the time for this where you just select route and then you hit command and then one of the brackets. If you wanna go backwards, you hit the left bracket. If you wanna go forwards, you hit the right bracket. But if you wanna do this manually, it, I, I like to show keyboard shortcuts but I have a tendency to overuse them in demonstrations I think. So let me just show you this. I'm just gonna click and drag and bring it below cities but not inside cities. I want to be below cities, but not inside. So when you see the plus sign, that's a good sign. You let go. Now my cities group is sitting on top of my routes group and you can see that the city dots are on top of my line. That's what I want. So I'm gonna close down cities. And by the way, if you decide you wanna make adjustments, just select the Bezier tool and then choose the edit points tool from this little menu. You just click and hold down, choose edit points and you can see, well, they're not showing up yet. I need to hit command forward slash again on the keyboard to bring this back up again. This are, these are the overlays. I like to get rid of them. Command forward slash makes everything go away so it's very easy to see what's going on. Command forward slash brings everything back again. If you need to move the points using the edit points tool, you can just edit the points. Once again, I'm gonna hold down command on the keyboard and that makes it so that the dynamic guides aren't getting in my way and I'll just hold down this and move it in fact, I'm gonna have it be right around there. In fact, I wanna change the tip of this. Right now, you can see, if I scroll down, you can see that the end cap is round. It's a rounded end cap. I want it to be an arrow, so I'm just gonna click and change it to an arrow, and I'm gonna shrink down that arrow size. Now that I have, I've changed it to arrow, I have arrow length, so I'm gonna reduce that, make it shorter. I'm also gonna reduce the width, make it more narrow, and since I have edit points still selected, I can move this and make it to where that tip of the arrow goes right to the city, Something like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and fit everything again. And I'm gonna change this back to the transform tool. And now we need to make this line animated. Well, the way you do that is by adjusting, setting keyframes on this last point offset. Watch what happens when I just grab this slider and move it back and forth. Last point offset. 
Okay, in order to see this, you need to make sure Bezier is selected. You have the shape inspector, style, and then scroll down under outline, you'll see last point offset. Okay. You can see when I just drag the slider, look at that. That's the animation that I want. So all I have to do is keyframe this and I'm good to go. Okay, so let's do that. With the playhead at the beginning of my project, I'm going to set a keyframe on last point offset by clicking on the add keyframe button. And then I'm going to move the playhead. Let's just go to four seconds or so. I'll move it to four seconds and I'll set another keyframe, last point offset. Now I don't have to do that because if I make any adjustments to this value, it's automatically going to change it. Well, in this case, I've got them both set for 100%. See that? No change. No change at all. But if I move the playhead back to the beginning, now instead of being at 100%, I'm going to move this all the way down to zero. Okay, so that's zero. So it's going to start at zero. And over the course of four seconds, it's going to go all the way up to 100. Let's play it back. I'm going to hit the space bar to play it back. And you can see four seconds. And it shows the path of travel there. Okay, by the way, incidentally, I should add, the reason I'm going from Phoenix to Kansas City is because I live in the Phoenix area. My in-laws live in Kansas City. We travel to go see them as a family. It's awesome. Okay, so now we have the animated map showing the destination. That's what we wanted. Now, I could stop here if I wanted to, but there's all kinds of additional things you can do. Like, for example, I like to add a little bit more animation. I like to have the map appear to be moving, or maybe I want to zoom in a little bit and pan around. Now, watch what happens if I pan my map here. So I'll just grab my map in the layers list, and I'm just going to click and drag around. You can see the map moves, but Phoenix and Kansas City stay where they are. I'm going to hit Command-Z to undo. The problem is that these items don't move together, and if you want things to move together, the best thing to do is to group them up. So I'm going to close down Route, I'm going to close down map, and I'm going to select by command clicking on all three of these groups, and I'm going to add them to a new group. So I'll select object, go to group, and where it's called group now, I'm just going to change the name to whole map, and then return. Now I can, with whole map selected, I can click and drag and move the whole thing around. You see that? Command Z to undo. There is a debate. Some people prefer to move the map around. Like if you want to add an animation, you could just move the whole map and you could do that. You can keyframe the position and move the whole thing around. My own personal preference is I like to add a camera and then animate the camera's movement. Now that's just my personal preference. It's great for the way that I think. So let's go ahead and do that as this demonstration. I'll add a camera by clicking on the camera button. It's gonna change my whole project to 3D, that's fine. With the camera selected now, I'm gonna move the playhead to the beginning. I'll go to properties and I'm gonna set a keyframe on position. And then I'll go to four seconds where we were before. And at that four second mark, I'm gonna zoom in. And the way that you can control the camera is by using this little button right here. You can see I can dolly. I'm just gonna click and drag down and that's gonna dolly in on Kansas City. And I want it centered. So I'm also gonna use the pan tool. I'll just pan over a little bit like this. Okay, so now what we have is a dolly and a pan. If I move the play to the beginning, actually right here, let's pan and zoom in. Let's zoom in a little bit better on Phoenix and I'm gonna pan over. Now I don't wanna show this black border. So I'll just pan over a little bit here. All right, let's see how that looks. So I'm gonna start here, hit the space bar. You can see that the camera pans in on Kansas City too. And I think that's a better effect. Now, one last thing I wanna show you here, and that is that right now, you can see that the route is coming to an abrupt end here. See that? It just stops automatically. I'm referring to this line here. Now I can change the way the animations look in the keyframe ad editor, the animation editor. And the way you do that is you just make sure you have the object selected. So I'll go to route and I'll choose Bezier. I'm gonna turn off the timeline and I'm gonna turn on the keyframe editor. I'll just click it once to turn it on. And you can see that this last keyframe is just straight here. This shows the way the animation curve. I'm gonna click and just control click right here and I'm gonna choose ease in to ease into that keyframe. So now what happens is you'll see that when I play it back, it's gonna ease in, it's gonna slowly go into that city and that's what I wanted. So there we have it. I'm gonna close down the keyframe editor now. So now we have the whole project for this one. From here, if I wanna use this in a project in Final Cut Pro 10, all I have to do is go to the share menu, export the movie, and of course I've shown this before, but from here you export the movie. I like to use Apple ProRes 444 and include the video only, click next, give it a name, and then you have a video clip that you can bring into Final Cut Pro 10. I'll hit cancel. Of course, there's a lot more you can do with this. You could animate the cities, for example. Like maybe I don't want Kansas City to be there at the beginning. I want it to fade in. I could do that. Maybe I want to have the camera not only pan and zoom, but also I want to have it kind of rotate. You could do that if you want as well. You have full capability and control over what this is going to look like when you create this type of thing in Motion 5. And that's one of the things I love about Motion 5 is it gives you all this creative control.
Well, there you have it. That's how you can create an animated map in Motion 5. I hope you find the information in this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.